What plan option is Medicare's best kept secret? What Medicare plan do agents not want to tell you about and why? What Medicare plan is the best Medicare Advantage alternative and who should pick this Medicare plan? Stay tuned because I'm going to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Chris Prang, the Medicare analyst, licensed agent in 14 states and I am based out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Maximizing your Medicare should be important to you and my goal is to help people like you make a wise and confident decision about all of your Medicare choices so that you can protect your income, your assets, your savings, and your health. Before I get started, if today is your birthday, then a very happy birthday to you. Shirley Bassey or Shirley Bassey said, you don't get older, you just get better. And be sure to see my health tip at the end of the video. So let's let the cat out of the bag. The high deductible plan G is what I call Medicare's best kept secret. I did a whole video about the high deductible G a year ago. You should watch it if you haven't. And if you happen to be from New York, then you definitely want to watch my recent video about why the high deductible G may be the best option for New Yorkers. If you are turning 65 or getting ready to start Medicare, or even if you already are on Medicare, then you really need to know about the high deductible G. If you have or you are considering Medicare Advantage, then the high deductible G is by far the best Medicare Advantage alternative that you can find. But why haven't you heard about it? Simple. One, a lot of Medicare supplement companies simply don't offer it. Every company offers the plan G and the plan N, but many don't offer the high deductible G. And number two, agents don't want to tell you about it because we earn so little commission on it. The high deductible G is like every other supplement in that one, it is secondary to original Medicare, meaning Medicare pays first, the supplement pays second. If Medicare pays, then the supplement will pay its share. Two, it is standardized, meaning it's the same coverage regardless of insurance company in the state you live in except Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And except for the deductible, it doesn't change from year to year like Medicare Advantage plans do. The high deductible G is like a catastrophic supplement, meaning it only kicks in if and when you've met the deductible, which for 2024 is $2,800, and that deductible amount does go up every year. And typically the way you would meet that deductible is when you've incurred some catastrophic health event, perhaps an inpatient hospital stay, an outpatient surgery, or an illness or disease that needs ongoing treatment on a frequent basis. Medicare will pay its share once you've met the Part A and or Part B deductible. You are responsible for any deductibles and the 20% coinsurance under Part B. And yes, you can use your HSA funds to pay for the deductibles, coinsurance, and the co-payments. So what are the benefits of the high deductible G? Number one, it is financially efficient. It provides financial security because it limits your financial risk exposure to the deductible amount. With only a $2,800 deductible, even if you hit it, that is much less than the typical max amount of pocket for most Medicare Advantage plans, which I will get to later. Also, premium savings in certain states like New York, the premium savings is huge. This allows you to repurpose your premium dollars for other retirement insurance solutions like long-term care, maybe life insurance, dental insurance, or some other investment. The premium savings from a high deductible G to a regular plan G or a plan N typically gets greater and greater every year because historically the high deductible G goes up at a much slower rate than the G or the N. Two, like Medicare, there are no networks. Unless you pick a Medicare Select supplement, which I advise you don't, and you can see my video about that, that means you can use the high deductible G at 97% of the providers that accept Medicare assignment and specialty hospitals that don't accept Medicare Advantage, especially Medicare Advantage HMOs, hello, like the Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins and others. Number three, it is flexible and portable. You can use it throughout the country. Whether you travel or you move, you don't have to change your plan. So who is the ideal person for a high deductible G? Their health is very important to them. They are very healthy. They maintain their health. They eat healthy. They exercise. They have good mental health. They may pray or meditate or think positive. They plan on staying in good health. They are financially savvy. Repurposing premium dollars for them is important for other retirement insurance solutions like maybe a long-term care plan, life insurance, dental insurance, or some other investment. 
In the event of an inpatient stay or an outpatient surgery, they can easily come up with the $2,800 to cover their share. Let me tell you about one of my clients. He was a VP of Wealth Strategies for American Express Financial Services prior to retirement. When I first met with him, he was already convinced that he wanted, in this case, a Humana Medicare Advantage Plan, HMO, and at that time, it had a modest premium of around $20 or $25, but it had a out-of-pocket maximum of $6,400. Yes, it came with dental, vision, and hearing. And when I showed him the high deductible G and explained to him that his financial risk exposure would be one-third of what it would be on the Medicare Advantage plan, and the premium was not that much more, the light bulb went on and he instantly got it and he chose the high deductible G and he has had it ever since then. Also, they want maximum healthcare flexibility and don't care about all the extra benefits and getting what they deserve with a Medicare Advantage plan. Who shouldn't get a high deductible G? Someone with serious health issues that frequents providers a lot. Someone on full Medicaid, where Medicaid picks up what Medicare doesn't pay, or they qualify for financial aid at a local hospital. Someone that prefers to set it and forget it, in that case, get the Plan G. And there's nothing wrong with that if that is what you want. So why is the high deductible G the best Medicare Advantage alternative? Before I answer that, let me make something very clear. I am not a Medicare Advantage naysayer like so many are. I personally have found that for the hundreds and hundreds of clients I've helped with Medicare Advantage, that the vast majority are very satisfied with their Medicare Advantage plan. Have some had issues? Yes, they have. Have some should have chosen or kept their Medicare supplement? Yes, they should have. But most have saved money and taken advantage of the extra benefits. Does Medicare Advantage have some serious issues? Yes, it does, which I've covered in other videos you can check out later. So here's why the high deductible G is the best Medicare Advantage alternative. Number one, it limits your financial risk exposure to $2,800, whereas the average Medicare Advantage plans expose you to almost $5,000 and oftentimes much higher. The Kaiser Family Foundation states, quote, in 2023, the weighted average out-of-pocket limit for Medicare Advantage enrollees is $4,835 for in-network services and $8,659 for in-network and out-of-network services combined. For enrollees and HMOs, the average out-of-pocket, which is only in-network, limit is $4,033. Enrollees and HMOs are generally responsible for 100% of the costs incurred for out-of-network care. Two, as mentioned, it is more flexible and portable. There are no networks to deal with. You don't have to worry if your provider is in or out of the network. You can use it throughout the country. If you move, you don't have to change your plan. Number three, less prior authorizations. Because it's tied to Medicare, as long as Medicare pays, the supplement will pay. As good as Medicare Advantage is for many people, there's a much greater likelihood that you will deal with prior authorization issues when it comes to Medicare Advantage, especially if you utilize skilled nursing. Now you may be thinking, okay, Chris, the high deductible G sounds really good to me, but what else could I consider? First, the plan N, it is a great middle of the road plan, less money than the plan G. The savings from a plan G to a plan N typically gets greater and greater over time. Low co-payments on just some office visits. You could consider a zero premium or low premium Medicare Advantage plan with good drug coverage, a large network, a low maximum out of pocket and generous extra benefits. And of course, you understand how it works and the pros and cons when it comes to Medicare Advantage. If you have questions about what I've just gone over and when you are ready for my help in maximizing your healthcare and retirement insurance coverage and making a wise choice when it comes to all of your Medicare insurance options and you live in one of the states that I'm licensed in, which you can see here, then please feel free to reach out to me either by phone or through one of my contact forms on my website. We will have an open and honest conversation about your healthcare needs, philosophies, and budget. I'll do my best to answer all of your questions and concerns. Once we determine what is best for your unique needs and budgets, I will then enroll you in the plan or the plans of your choice. And of course, be available down the road for your support. To stay up to date and to gain more insight on maximizing your Medicare insurance, then please go ahead and subscribe. And who do you know who may benefit from this info? Please share it with them. One last thing. Did you know 
that not only physical activity reduces or delays the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, but so does learning a second language. Medical News Today reported, quote, people who took adult education classes in middle to old age are less likely to develop dementia or experience cognitive decline later on in life, according to a new study from Tohoku University in Senda, Japan. They went on to say that, quote, individuals participating in adult education classes at the start of the study had a 19% lower risk of dementia five years later. That is pretty impressive, unquote. And in the Iowa State University report titled, Study Shows Learning a Second Language Thwarts Onset of Dementia, it stated, through a meta-analysis of the data, the researchers discovered that the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are halted by up to five years on average in people who fluently speak more than one language. I guess we all need to start learning a second language. I hope that encourages you. I'm Chris Pang, the Medicare Analyst. Make it a great day. Or should I say, que sea un gran día.